It is finally time to do an updated DVD collection. This has been so requested lately because obviously my collection has grown so much since I did my last DVD collection, which was in 2021, when I had only 250 DVDs. I say only, but to me, 250 seems like a lot. I have now grown my collection to over 400 DVDs, and I'm finally reaching a place where I'm pretty content, and I'm not actively buying a bunch of DVDs anymore. I don't think I I've bought a new DVD for months, actually. Well, no, that's a lie. Maybe like two months. Before we get into it though, I just wanna address two of the major questions that I get regarding my collection. Number one, where are your shelves from? Where do you get these media shelves? I will link them directly down below from Amazon where I got them. You can get them at other retailers. You don't have to buy them from Amazon. Now the second question that I get asked all the time is why DVDs? Why don't you collect Blu-rays? Or why do you collect physical media at all? I'm gonna be brief with my answer because I don't want this intro to be too long. I love physical media. I grew up with physical media. I'm a millennial. But DVDs to me, are my childhood. I remember the first DVDs I ever bought. I remember when they were invented. There's many, many reasons why I do DVDs over Blu-rays or 4K. For one, I don't personally see a huge difference with Blu-ray where I feel the need to have a Blu-ray copy or 4K of every single one of these. Also, the last reason I'll get into about why DVDs is because they are easier to find secondhand and used, and that's typically how I purchase my DVDs. I don't buy a ton of new copies. I prefer to buy secondhand when I can and thrift them. For one, it's less waste in general, and number two, it's so much cheaper. Like DVDs secondhand are like $2.99. So I'm not sure what to really focus on when it comes to my collection, so I'm just gonna pull some out that I think are interesting before I could list every single DVD. In this video, I'm not going to do that, but you'll be able to see every single shelf that I have, so you can pause and look at all the DVDs I have, and yeah, just look at my collection. But yeah, let's dive in. We'll start with this top shelf with just some like horror stuff that I have here and there. Uh, before we get into the actual shelves. We have a Thing VHS light. We have a little Jason figurine, which like comes apart. I do have the Midsummer Director's Cut edition up here because it doesn't fit on any of the shelves in addition to a little Midsummer candle, which is also from Etsy. I will link it down below. I have this really cool Blair Witch CD. So this is Josh's Blair Witch Mix and a little broken stick figure that I made that fell to the floor and broke because I just made it with hot Glue, so it didn't really last that long. <laughs> I have this beautiful art print from Hemshaw Herbarium. They make some of the best horror art I've ever seen because it's so subtle. This one is obviously The Ring, and I have my little, uh, what do you call it, film cell thing that has an actual film cell from The Ring movie, my Samara Polaroid, a little pin, my old hourglass which is super cool. This is my newest uh, addition to the shelf. I actually bought it to use, but my partner put it up here and I kind of like how it looks. Uh, that's obviously from Joker. And then my little YouTube plaque from when I hit 100,000 subscribers. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of my entire collection. So one major update that will please a lot of people because everyone complained about it before is my collection is now fully alphabetized. That is right. There are still some categories that are kept separate. So the top three shelves are going to hold all of my horror movies, all of my horror DVDs. That is, I do have horror Blu-rays, which I will get to that are on the lower shelves. But for the most part, the bottom three shelves are not horror at all. Now, the only exception to this system is this upper left shelf, which contains all of my space movies or my alien movies. So some of these are horror. Most of them are just my space sci-fi movies, which you know are some of my favorite movies of all time. So as you can see, they're not all horror movies, but some of my favorites on this shelf are obviously Interstellar, that's my favorite non-horror movie of all time. Ad Astra is definitely up there as far as visuals for space, much like Interstellar. The horror movies that I have that are sci-fi alien, we have The Fourth Kind, we have Sunshine, and then of course, Sunshine is probably the most underrated space horror movie. And then of course we have both The Things, both remakes. Oh, and of course The Fly and Event Horizon. Now the two most underrated on this shelf are definitely Another Earth, 
This movie is so beautiful. It's kind of a slow burn, but recommend that. And then also Aniara. This movie will leave you with the ultimate sense of dread, but it is so incredible and beautiful at the same time. So on this shelf, I do have some box sets. So we have Annabelle, three film collection, never been opened. I think I found this at Walmart for $10. Sometimes you can get some really good deals in the bargain bins. We have 28 days and 28 weeks later on the same DVD, which just makes it convenient. There are some movies and series that I have in box sets and some that I have completely individual DVDs. Of course, we have all of the aliens on one little box set. Ironically, we have two of my favorite Christmas movies back to back up here. So we have Better Watch Out and Black Christmas from 2006. And one of my most recent purchases and additions to the shelf is the Belko Experiment. Now, this is one movie that I saw in theaters and didn't like that much, but something kept me thinking about it and I wanted to watch it again, so I thought, why not buy it? One of my most recent watches as of filming this video is 10 Cloverfield Lane. So as you can see, it has a sticker from this place called The Cave, which is a consignment store for physical media. So they have things from books, VHSs, DVDs, video games, CDs. This is one of my oldest DVDs in my collection. We have Chernobyl Diaries that I lent to a friend whose dog chewed it up, but I still keep it. I don't want to replace it because the DVD itself is fine and the case is fine other than that little chewed up part. I have one movie that I haven't even opened, but I've owned for a while and that's Child's Play, <laughs> the new, what would you call it, reboot. So one of the oldest movies in my collection as far as like time frame is definitely Carrie, the original from 1976. Yes, 76. Obviously a classic. And then also Christine, which was a new watch for me, a uh, Stephen King movie as well from the 80s. You'll notice I don't have a lot of like super old movies. I do have some creep show though. I have both creep shows. This one is one of the oldest DVDs in my collection. This like paper case of the first creep show. So this shelf is a great example of the fact that I own all of the Final Destination movies on their own instead of having like a whole collection. There's a few reasons why I do this. First of all, I started buying them individually instead of in a box set, but also sometimes they continue the series or the franchise and then you just have like a box set and then like a random DVD off to the side that was an extra add-on because it was done years later. Although it would probably save space. Like I totally get the space saving aspect of getting a box set. So this is another DVD that I've had for a very long time, my Disturbia DVD. One of my favorite cases, uh, it's a lenticular case. Some people always ask me like, what are your favorite cases in your collection? And I can never think of one. Is that not nostalgic? You know, did you go to middle school in the early 2000s? Cause they just don't make DVD cases or like cases of physical media like they used to. Like this is incredible. So my collection loops around. So going from this shelf that we just finished off on, we're gonna head over to this shelf right over here. So as you can see, I only own the first two Friday the 13th movies. Frailty is probably one of the most underrated movies on my shelves. And this one has a sticker from Half Price Books, another great consignment store that sells used media, including, I mean, it's mostly books, obviously, based on the name of the store, but I love Half Price Books. I just recently started going there for my DVDs. I used to have my thriller and horror movies separate but I find that the line just gets a little bit too blurry so I did include all of my thriller movies in my horror collection as well so we have movies like The Gift in here I absolutely hate this cover like what is why do you put a Rotten Tomatoes logo on there like it looks so bad The Glass House is another one that is a really good thriller if you haven't seen it coming all the way over here we have my Halloween collection separated by the shelf. I hate when this happens, when a franchise is split up, but what are you gonna do? So I have the original Halloween. Oh, that's not the original. <laughs> Let's go this way. Let's reorganize that. We have the original Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween. I also have Rob Zombie's Halloween, which I love. I know that's controversial. Uh, don't love the second one, but this one's really good. We have the latest 2018 Halloween. And then of course over here, we have Halloween Kills 
which is controversial to love, but I really love this movie, and I don't think I'm gonna buy the third one in the trilogy, to be honest. I know I'm gonna have an incomplete, incomplete trilogy when it comes to the new Halloween movies, but the, the new one was bad, so I don't want it. Now we're deep into the H's. Again, we have some thrillers on here. Now, there is a movie on this shelf. In fact, there's been a couple movies so far in my collection that I've never seen. There is a movie on here I haven't seen. I'll do a stack of all the movies in my collection that I've never watched before. Now here we have some more box sets or, you know, double features. We have this one, which people always covet on my Instagram whenever I post it with I Know What You Did Last Summer and When a Stranger Calls. I can't remember where I found that one, but that definitely was a good find. The House on Haunted Hill case is one of my least favorite cases. I like the case in itself. Like this is very nice. These paper cases are very like early 2000s. Like look at that. You have the chapters listed out, but the cases are very frustrating to have in the collection because they always like stick out in a weird way. Anyway, and then we have the Insidious Trilogy, uh, all three. Again, I found the second hand at the cave for $4.99. $4.99 for all three Insidious movies. Again, they obviously made a fourth Insidious movie, which I do own, and we'll get to that. Underrated movies from this shelf, I will definitely have to say The Innkeepers. I really like this case. I like when cases go clear. I think it looks really nice. Oh, Honeymoon. This is a great, great movie if you haven't seen it yet. The Hole. This movie is so good, so iconic, great cast, early 2000s. I love everything about this and I love watching it in the fall. So I think I might actually watch this today. Hereditary is a movie on <laughs> the shelf that I have never watched the actual DVD of before, um, but something compelled me to buy it. Uh, because, you know, I do it. I like the movie. I just have never seen it a second time. But I think I just wanted to own it. I don't know. Now, I have all three It movies. So I have the original, which I don't really reach for, honestly. I just kind of have it in my collection. There are some in this on my shelves that I don't reach for that often or want to rewatch. A new addition to my collection is this Joyride box set. I call it a box set, but like what else would you call this? I feel like it's not a box set, but just like a compilation of, you know, two or more movies. <laughs> now, the first Joyride I think is really underrated. It's definitely more of a thriller, but I really love it, and I've never seen the second and the third, and I've heard they're really good as well, so I just went ahead and bought this second hand on Thrift Books. One of the worst movies in my collection that I actually really don't like <laughs> It's The Last Exorcism Part 2. There used to be stickers on here, which is why there's like yellowing on there. This movie is just not good. I own it because it was my partner and my first date ever. Uh, so it's nostalgic for me and I really love the first one. So part of me did just want the second one to have, but it is like one of the worst ones. One that I think people will be surprised to know that I own is The Last House on the Left. This one I love because it's an old blockbuster DVD, which whenever I find those, those are like gems, man. I absolutely love finding old vintage, I'm gonna call it vintage, uh, blockbuster DVD cases. Some of my favorite movies are on the shelf as well. Last Night in Soho, obviously. You guys remember my obsession with this last year. Mama, I think is incredible and not talked about enough, to be honest. I haven't rewatched this in a long time. I think I'm due. Moving on to the last shelf on shelf number two, Misery, one of my favorite movies of all time and my favorite Stephen King adaptation of all time. Now, this movie I actually bought without even seeing it first and then I watched it and now I'm like, do I want to own the DVD? It's such a bad movie in a really weird way. It's very early 2000s. Uh, I am glad that I own it. I, I might revisit it one day, but it's definitely a weird experience to just buy it sight unseen and then watch it for the first time and then not not really sure if I should get rid of it. I don't know. Now my friend Dahmer I think is another one that will surprise people that I have in my collection. Again, like I said, the thrillers are mixed in with the horrors um, because I don't love serial killer content. I don't love true crime or anything like that. And I openly talked out against Ryan Murphy's series on Netflix, but I found that this movie, first of all, this copy was sent to me. I didn't buy it, um, but I kept it because I didn't find that this movie was really exploitative. 
Did it make him sympathetic? Absolutely. But to me, it wasn't as offensive as other Dahmer uh, things that have come out as of late. Now, I do have four of the Nightmare movies on DVD, and I never talk about these movies. Uh, I've only seen the first one, but a viewer actually sent this to me. She was clearing out her collection and asked if I wanted some DVDs. So I'm very grateful, and now it gives me no excuse to watch at least a little bit more of the franchise. Do you want to know my opinions on this franchise? Because I never talk about it, but I do own these four. So maybe one day I'll finally share what I think about the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Okay, did anyone else see this movie, or are we just like... Was this like a fever dream for anyone else? Some other really great ones on this shelf. We have Old, Overlord, just some really good ones. I have a great collection, guys. Like this collection is just so me, obviously, because I curated it. I also have the Paranormal movies on a box set as well. This has all six movies. Obviously, it doesn't have the most recent one that came out on Paramount Plus, which I really liked. All right, we have done the top two shelves. Let's get into the third shelf, which is our last shelf of horror movies. I'm sure you were waiting for this shelf for obvious reasons. We have my entire ring collection, including the original Ringyu and the Ring 2, the Japanese versions. Now, anyone else ever hear about this rings? So this DVD just contains an exclusive short film, which is really good. If you can track that down, please watch it. The cursed videotapes from each one, the origin of terror, the phenomenon of urban legends, and never before seen interviews with the stars and filmmakers. I love having this. It's basically like an, a bonus DVD of special features for the ring. But if you're a fan of the ring and have never seen those special features, go track this down. Again, Phoenix Forgotten should definitely go on the top shelf, but I don't have any room up there, so it hangs out in the peas. Haunty Pool, one of my favorite zombie movies of all time. Look at that blockbuster exclusive. See, that's a sticker I do, well, not a sticker, but that's a graphic I don't mind being on my DVDs because that's Direct from Blockbuster, baby. The Possession's a really underrated Possession movie, I guess. The sleeve is really ugly. I bought it at Walmart, as you can see, a little Walmart sticker on there. Um, definitely one that I kind of want to throw away, but for now I'm just keeping all of the sleeves. But definitely track down the Possession if you like Possession movies. Stephen King's Rose Red. This is one of the hardest DVDs to track down. This is one of the hardest ones, like hardest finds I've ever had and one of my prized possessions now because of how difficult it was to find this DVD. This shelf obviously contains a lot of franchise and I could obviously save a lot of space <laughs> if I just bought the box sets for these movies. So I have the entire Saw catalog. Oh, we got St. Maude chilling over here because alphabetical, but yeah, St. Maude's amazing. So yeah, all my Saw movies, these have some of my favorite cases. So you guys always ask, what are your favorite cases? Any of the Saw movies that have these sleeves and like these clear plastic cases are so cool. Saw 2 has one of my favorite cases of all time. I really need to go through and take off these stickers to really highlight how cool these cases are, at least the sleeves. Then we have all of the screens, including the most recent one. I did buy it on DVD, and hopefully I like the sixth one. Yeah, the sixth one's coming out. Um, hopefully I like that one enough to buy it as well and complete the collection, but maybe by then there'll be a box set. This is one franchise I would downgrade because I just recently bought all of these. And by downgrade, I mean buy a box set for because it's not my favorite franchise. I like owning them now, but yeah, these are all recent purchases. Seven has a cool case, but you know, it's a paper case and it sticks out from the rest but it does have one of the cooler cases in my collection. Like, look at this, look at this. You can't even see it all. Look at how cool that is. I definitely love it. I think I found this one at Goodwill, which is such a good find. This movie, I'm honestly debating getting rid of. I know. For one, it's a paper case. I think it's really ugly. <laughs> I really hate the case of this. It just does not look good. Uh, what is this? There's like an old sticker on it. I don't know. Again, we got the chapters listed. Gotta have those. I just never want to watch The Shining, you know what I mean? Like, I just never want to watch it. And I feel like you can always find it on streaming because it's so popular. So I might actually get rid of that one in my collection. Underrated movie on the shelf, definitely. I'm gonna go with Shrooms. Go watch this. It's so funny, goofy, campy. 
uh, gory. It's just, this one's a good time. Oh, this is funny. So sometimes what I do when I buy a DVD and I like the cover of it or, you know, I, I do uh, stacks a lot on my Instagram. I don't always love the stickers that go on the edges of the movies. This one has an OG horror sticker on it though. So I kept that. But sometimes what I will do is take the stickers from the front and I will move them to the back. So for some reason I like to keep the stickers from the cave. Um, but also this was a blockbuster movie, so I put it on the back there. Just so I can remember like its origin story, you know, it has its personality preserved. Moving on, we have this shelf. We're in the S's and the T's now. So I do have both Silent Hills. I kind of love the stickers on this Silent Hill. It came from a library. So one thing when you order from thriftbooks.com, which a lot of my collection is actually from there, they sell books obviously, but a lot of people don't know they sell used DVDs as well. So sometimes you get these library copies, which don't always go like right. This one was fine. It's just a normal DVD case. I will tell you that this one up here, this Ma case, as you can see, Charleston County Library. I love that these come from all over the country. I think that's really fun. I can't close it because there's this lock mechanism that is on the case. I had to pry this open with a screwdriver because when they delivered it, I could not get this open without a library lock. And I'm an impatient person sometimes and I just wanted to get into it right then and there. I probably could have gone to a library to get them to open it. I probably could have returned it to thrift books or you know, let them know about the situation and maybe they would have replaced it. Uh, but I got in, but now it, it doesn't close like this. So it takes up a lot of space up here and I kind of have to like shove it back in. Anyway, this shelf has one of my favorite finds from a consignment store or secondhand store and that is this steel case two disc ultimate edition of the original texas chainsaw massacre look at how beautiful this case is first of all and then when you open it we have an ad for dark sky films which i actually follow on twitter this is their 2006 dvd catalog i think that's really fun this probably came out around that time but yeah we have the feature the bonus disc in there a lot of special features listed on there i haven't really delved into the special features of this yet and then i have the beginning which I think is pretty underrated blockbuster. Uh, this one I owned in high school and then I ended up getting rid of the copy of the DVD and then I got it again. And then one of my favorite Texas movies in the whole franchise is actually this remake. I believe it's from 2003, but yeah, this remake is really, really good. Highly recommend if you've never seen it. Another paper case that I have that I don't love is 13 Ghosts, but this is one of the oldest DVDs in my collection. Look at that original green horror sticker. You never see those anymore. I miss seeing those when you go to Blockbuster. You have the DVD logo sticker on there. I do love the front cover of this, but because it's a paper case, it's not my favorite. So this DVD is very special. This is impossible to find. It is streaming on YouTube, which I didn't know when I talked about this. And then an author actually reached out to me to send me his book and I got his book. Thank you, Christian. And he also sent this DVD as well. And such a great movie too. So definitely go watch this. It is free on YouTube. Okay, now we have the last shelf of horror movies in my collection. We have all three VHS tape, or VHS tapes, VHS in the franchise. Obviously I don't own 94 or 99 because those are i think exclusively on shutter i have a couple pairs here woman in black woman in black 2. again this is one that i could probably do without in my collection i really don't like this movie i have two wrong turn movies these movies are so hard to track down one time in walmart i saw a box set of six wrong turn movies and i didn't buy it it was like for 15 dollars, such a good deal and i regret every day that I did not buy that because I always crave to watch the entire franchise and I only have the first two. Um, so in order to watch the others, I have to track them down. One of the newest in the collection is of course, X. This came out this year. It's one of the most modern movies in my collection. This next shelf is one of my favorite shelves in my whole collection. So the first shelf that we went through was all of my sci-fi, 
alien or space movies. Well, this is all of my dystopian movies. And that's another genre that is one of my favorites of all time. There's something so comforting to me about dystopia and just different realities or like different worlds or apocalypse movies for some reason are very calming to me. We have some classic apocalyptic movies, Armageddon 2012, Day After Tomorrow, and then we have some underrated apocalypse movies such as Greenland. If you've never seen Greenland, this movie is so underrated, so good. Another underrated one is The Core. This is one of the cheesiest movies in my entire collection. I never see anyone else talk about this. It is an older movie, but there's just something so fun about this movie. Obviously my Hunger Games collection is in here as well. Dread is a movie that I love to rewatch. This movie is so rewatchable to me and such a fun dystopian movie. Now for my favorite movie on the shelf, it is one of my favorite movies of all time is The Fifth Element. This movie, iconic in so many ways, the fashion, the music, everything about this, the performances, the story, I, I love everything about this movie, it is perfect. Okay, now we're delving into my non-horror movie collection. I know a lot of you are probably gonna be curious of which DVDs I own. I will be doing a stack at the end of the video of my favorite non-horror movies from this collection, but let's just start, shall we? Very topical right now, we have Adam's Family and Adam's Family Values, a must-have in the collection. The Bling Ring. This movie is so good. I absolutely am obsessed with this movie. I love re-watching it. If I don't know what to watch and I don't feel like a horror movie, I will just throw that on because it's such a casual watch for me. I could just have it on in the background. Now, if you've never seen this movie, go watch this right now. I think it's still free on Tubi. I love Natasha Lyonne. I love Clea Duvall and to have them together in a movie and dating, oh my gosh. Obviously I have the classics. I got Clueless, Bring It On, Easy A. Now I do have Divergent in here, which is obviously a dystopian movie, but again, I ran out of room over there. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just put this one on the top there like this one is, and now I can put hot chicken here. Actually, it goes on another shelf. So let's do a little rearranging for just a second. A movie from my childhood that I love so much is The Flintstones from the 90s with John Goodman. Oh, underrated in this collection, Downsizing with Matt Damon. Matt Damon's one of my favorite actors. Don't ask why, I don't know. There's something about him that's very comfy to me. So Lady in the Water's up here. I don't know why I bought this. I think because it's M. Night Shyamalan, but I've never seen it. <laughs> So I've heard really terrible things about this movie. So that's on a, you know, to be watched list. Once I watch it, I'll know if I like it and if I'll keep it. But I got it at Goodwill, I think, for a couple dollars. And I love anything M. Night Shyamalan, so I'm hoping it's good. One cool find in this part of my collection is my high school yearbook three film collection. What movies do you think are on this? Just take a guess first and then I'll reveal it. Okay, we got <laughs> Perks of Being a Wallflower, Five Feet Apart, and The Duff. Uh, I tried watching The Duff, I can't stand it. But I do like The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and this was in a $5 bargain bin at Walmart, so I was like, for $5 I'll buy Perks of Being a Wallflower. I just happened to get two other movies with it. Um, never seen Five Feet Apart. One of the more modern movies in this is Knives Out. Hideous, hideous case. What is going on with this case? Why is it so ugly? I can never include it in stacks. I do, but like this is so bad and it's printed on the actual paper of the movie cover so it's not like I can take it out of the plastic and peel it off. This is horrible. We have some Robin Williams on here. Two underrated Robin Williams movies are on here. One Hour Photo and Patch Adams. Please go watch those. Recent edition, can you believe I did, well I technically do own this, but can you believe I didn't have a DVD? of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Look at this. Look at how cool this case is, first of all. You open it up, beautiful, stunning. 13 is one of my favorite movies of all time, period. I have like a screener copy of There Will Be Blood. That's a really interesting one, just like a really skinny paper copy, I don't know. I do have a paper case of Scooby-Doo, uh, 
had to get this this is a classic so yeah there you have it that's the rest of my non-horror collection except it's not we're gonna do handheld for the rest of the video because it's gonna be easier to kind of pan through and the rest of it I'm gonna go through it really quickly so technically underneath this shelf of all of my non-horrors we have my animated shelf so these are all my kids movies that I own that I never thought I would own like have a collection of kids movies to be honest but now that I'm having a baby obviously I'm very happy that I'm gonna have these on hand now I do accidentally have two monster house copies sometimes that happens to me in my collection I forget what I have and I haven't scanned it into Libib which is how I keep track of everything and I I, I just by two but these are just my childhood I mean Hercules is probably my favorite Disney movie of all time maybe Emperor's New Groove actually it's so hard to pick like I really don't know I do have Disney's Tron in here even though it's not animated but I just I could go in dystopian I don't really know anyway but this is one of those situations where I got really lucky with the addition even though I did not want one this big like do I need this what the heck I don't even like this movie that much like why do I have this giant special edition i literally just bought a normal dvd of the nightmare before christmas and this is what came <laughs> it's like this is not what i what i expected um but i i'm not complaining i guess it takes up a lot of space though so here we finally have my blu-ray collection now there's horror and non-horror in here now for some reason this is how i own all of the conjuring movies it wasn't intentional this isn't really alphabetized that well so i do own two copies of some of my favorite movies Sometimes when I find a Blu-ray copy of one of my favorites, I will buy it. So with that, we have Snowpiercer. This was $5.99, which is really good for Blu-ray. So I bought it. And then I have Interstellar. I have two copies of that. And then, oh my gosh, guys, the most recent addition to my collection is the Ring Steelbook. I will go ahead and show it to you. This is what the book actually looks like. And then when you open it up, we have Samara and then a beautiful blue disc, and then the back is the tree. And then the only other steel book that I own is Spiral, and this case is beautiful. I love this, this was sent to me. A lot of these are sent to me, so I have like American Horror Story Roanoke on Blu-ray for some reason. Uh, the Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It was sent to me in PR because that was in Blu-ray. I decided to get the other two Conjuring movies on Blu-ray as well, just to complete my set. And then I also have a Blu-ray copy of Spiral as well. So they sent both the Steelbook and the Blu-ray. Next we have what I call my fantasy shelf because not only does it house all of my Harry Potters, which I have on DVD and Blu-ray, and of course I have the Fantastic Beasts. I probably won't buy the third one that just came out. Um, but I also have two Lord of the Rings movies, which I'm still working on my collection of that. And then of course we have Labyrinth. And then this random thing is a <laughs> Harry Potter DVD game. I have yet to play that. To the left of that is just a random basket with some random things in it. I have some Harry Potter puzzles that are like a hundred pieces. So moving down, we reach my VHS collection and just kind of like a random, I don't even know. I have DVDs of Will and Grace, one, two, three, four, and eight. And then as you can see, these are my VHSs. So I have Adam's family. Family, Young Frankenstein, The Rocky Horror Picture Show, The Ring, of course, and The Blair Witch Project. Now, this copy of The Rocky Horror Picture Show is my mom's original copy. This one also is very old, one of the original movies in my collection. So some other relics in my collection are these three discs of season one of America's Next Top Model. Now, I don't watch America's Next Top Model anymore. I don't rewatch it. I used to all the time, um, but it's just left a really bad taste in my mouth. However, I cannot get rid of these three little skinny cases of season one. This is <laughs> one of the best seasons, and it's just, this is so early 2000s for them to have to split it up into three individual discs. So moving over, we have Ryan's video game collection, you can see, and then we have his movie collection down over here if you are curious. So now let's get into some stacks to highlight a little bit more of my collection. The first up being movies I have never seen that are in my collection. Okay, I actually haven't seen quite a few of the movies that I have in my collection. Why do I do this? I wish I could tell you. First up, non-horror. We have Gatsby. I've never seen it. I found this in a dumpster. 
No lie. At our old apartments, there was a giant dumpster that was full of stuff from someone's apartment and they were throwing it away. And there was a whole DVD rack in there with that was full of DVDs. And we went a little dumpster diving and I pulled some DVDs and this was one of them. I already talked about it, but Lady in the Water from M. Night Shyamalan. Never seen it. I've heard it's really bad. That makes me kind of not want to watch it. We have Hide and Seek. I don't even remember where I got this or why. This one I got at Goodwill. I remember this. This is recent. Stay with Naomi Watts, Ryan Gosling, and Ewan McGregor. It's an old blockbuster case. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. I've never seen it. I think it's a thriller. That reminds me of another Naomi Watts movie I have never seen that I forgot to pull. Mulholland Drive. Now this is by David Lynch. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like it. I think it's really a 50-50 if I'm gonna like this one, but it is a famous David Lynch movie that I found at Half Price Books for $6.99, so I bought it. Ring 2, the original Japanese. I've never finished the series of the Japanese movies. I've only watched the American ones, but I have seen the original Ring, um, but haven't watched this one. Mirrors 2, I have seen the first Mirrors, I've never seen this, but it was uh, $4.99 at the cave. So I thought, why not? It's probably cheesy and gory and full of fun. Now this one I'm pretty sure I have seen, but I don't really remember it. So I'm gonna say that I haven't. Lastly, Apollo 18. This was in the space section. Um, it's a found footage movie set in space. Why haven't I watched it yet? Maybe that needs to go in the front, like the forefront. There's also no DVD in it. Um, I guess I won't be watching it. I, I could not tell you where that is. Next, let's do my most obscure DVDs in my collection. Either they were really hard to track down or they're just obscure movies that I think are underrated. Okay, first up, we have Unsane. Now this is a found footage movie shot entirely on an iPhone. So to me, that's pretty obscure and not a lot of people have seen this. I already mentioned it, but My Little Eye, this is just a random DVD. No one's seen this movie, like no one. I'm gonna say ABC's A Death 2 is pretty obscure. I mean, the first one is well known, but what about the second one? Have you seen it? <laughs> the Bay, this one really underrated, body horror, gross, nasty found footage movie go watch it. The Innkeepers, this is, I think, an underrated movie by Ty West. Obviously, we know and love Ty West now for directing X and Pearl and soon Maxine, um, but no one really talks about the Innkeepers that he did, so recommend it. Like I mentioned before already, Frailty, this is a good one, very obscure. I feel like no one really talks about it. It has Matthew McConaughey in it, <laughs> which is kind of random, um, but yeah, go watch it. This one's not really obscure i would say phoenix forgotten i just never see anyone really mention this or talk about it i already mentioned the tunnel this is impossible to track down a physical copy of so again thank you christian for sending this to me i am very honored and i'm gonna treasure this for the rest of my life again i already talked about it stephen king's rose red impossible to track down whether it be on streaming or a physical copy. You just cannot find this anywhere. I kind of already went over them a little bit, but let's do a stack of my favorite non-horror movies. This will be the last stack, I think. Now, it'd be safe to say that any of the space movies up here would be a favorite non-horror movie, and also any of the dystopian or, or apocalyptic movies would be a favorite, but I tried to only grab like one or two off of those shelves because all of those are favorites, like Melancholia, but again, this is by Lars von Trier, Ar arguably could be a horror movie. The last like five minutes or so are so haunting. I, it's just, it's hard to handle. I mentioned Girl Interrupted already. This movie is so iconic. Winona Ryder, Angelina Jolie, Brittany Murphy, such a great cast, um, just a great movie. One of the best probably of the era or at least in my lifetime. Chicago. I know. I'm not into musicals that much, but I do own a couple of them. But Chicago is like the OG musical that I got really into in high school and tried to learn all of the dances. So gotta give a shout out to Chicago. 13, again, one of the best movies of its era. Love this, love everything about it. Swiss Army Man, Daniel Radcliffe, Paul Dano. How can you go wrong? By the Daniels, who made everything everywhere all at once? Yeah. You need to watch this. Like I said, Fifth Element, again, 90s classic movie. I could watch this over and over and over again. I will never get bored. Lovely Bones. This was my favorite non-horror movie up until I saw Interstellar. And obviously Interstellar for obvious reasons. I mean, this is just, it's easily, in my opinion, the best movie ever made. 
And lastly, downsizing. I already talked about it. Matt Damon, love it. Love the Martian too. Almost pulled it but I didn't. Anything Matt Damon, I'm gonna like. So there you have my updated DVD collection of over 400 DVDs. I think I'm good now. There are definitely some that are coming out like more recently that I really, really want, like the 2022 movies, but I'm gonna hold off for a little while, have a baby and focus on that and then maybe one day I'll continue to expand because we live in a one bedroom. I can't really expand beyond this. I can't buy any more shelves. So however many fit on the shelf is going to be my max for now. What are your favorite movies on these shelves or in my collection? What is your ultimate goal for your collection? Are you a collector? So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.